10 days from now, it's Christmas. I was just wondering who of you will go to church when it's Christmas? Oh, that's a lot. Um, why? Because it's the birthday of Christ, whatever. What else? Okay. <laughs> it's the birthday of Newton. <laughs> and we're sorry, we're sorry. Sorry. Go to the <laughs> observatory. Um, I, I, I'll go to I'll go to a Christmas service because uh, uh, at Christmas, for me, I celebrate Christmas, uh, and it's best summarized. The reason is best summarized in one line from John's Gospel, um, and the light shines in the darkness, mm -hmm. and darkness cannot overcome it. Now, that the light shines in darkness, that seems to me a very interesting uh, concept. Obviously, people will contest whether Christ is the light. I believe Christ is the light. But this idea that something good is inserted in a situation in which, which is compromised, which is kind of dark, mm -hmm. that seems to me significant. But I think I, I actually like the second line of this, uh, of this saying, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Yes. And for me, Christmas is a celebration of kind of primordial nature of the good. We discussed earlier uh, this morning about the primacy of good and the place of evil, weakness or strength of, of evil. I believe that uh, good is primary. It's primordial, in fact, so that evil is always distortion of uh, the good. Mm -hmm. And that the victory is there already existence itself is good and this existence, our existence itself, we celebrate. And we start from there. And that's also why I believe that it's goodness that overcomes the evil and that the evil can all be, always only be overcome within the moral frame, whether that's just well, war. Well, I, I, Better I, ask me why I won't go to. Okay, uh, that, why, is, why is that you're not going? For two reasons. Two reasons. Uh, one reason is that in Russia we have two calendars. One the <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. Go, go so twice. Once, twice. Go twice. Go What's go the problem? No, no, the thing is that uh, <laughs> now, first we have the uh, Western Christmas, then the New Year, then the Russian Christmas, then the Russian New Year. So it's kind of stupid to, to, um, to, to mix them together. So what do you celebrate when you go, let's say, on the 25th, right, when it's uh, old or old Russian or... Um, I mean, secular Russian or Western Christmas, when uh, the real Christmas will happen later. Religious Christmas. So it is um, but crazy. Is one, one thing, that's, that's crazy um, by itself. But the other reason is more mysterious and deep. The thing is that Russians, uh, including me, uh, they celebrate Easter because it is a mystery. To be born, it's nothing. Everyone is born. But to be resurrected, Oh my goodness, cryonics. Oh, oh there no. you are. Oh, finally, <laughs> finally, finally. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, you need to rename your company the Easter uh, Company. I know. Yeah. 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 Rebrand it. The resurrection. The resurrection. I, I, it's my turn. Okay. Why I'm not going to church? Uh, I, you know, it's my church is in, in my spirit, and it's in, it's 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 in my spirituality, and I don't need to go to a building or an edifice. Although I love the Gothic cathedral, and I love basilicas in Italy, and the acoustics and all of that. But one thing that we've missed in this conversation is biology, and another thing that we've missed is really talking about evil. And we well, we discussed evil in politics, and I think beautifully in in some of the the stories that, that you told, especially with the film and, and Mike and, and here and, and your experiences in Syria and Russia and everything that goes on. But we must realize that we are human, physical, biological agents. We have agency. We have sentience. And we must forgive certain elements of evil because if we don't have oxytocin, the chemical emitted in our neurological framework, we can't feel joy or happiness. And 5% of the population does not have the genetic makeup to produce oxytocin. And are those people evil because they can't produce oxytocin? No, that it, it can't be really detected. And if you look at the prisons, 80% of people in prison can't produce oxytocin, not because of a genetic 
deficiency, but because they didn't learn how to build the neural pathways when they were children because they didn't get nurturing. So it's a new way to look at evil as maybe not the dark side and maybe horrible, horrific people, but to also have some compassion that if someone cannot feel joy or happiness or love, which is to me better than good, it's the, you know, the equivalent opposite of evil. There is nothing like love and, and generosity. But the reason that I wanted to, to, to have this discussion uh, on Thank Christmas, you. he said, <laughs> and the idea is there is also something like a cosmic war, yeah. you know, which is fantasized in Star Wars, and then let the force be with you. Yeah. Uh, but there is a force of evil, metaphysical. Wouter uh, uh, told the story about it. Uh, uh, and then the idea, uh, at least in Christianity, there is also a redeemer and there is redemption, um, which has nothing to do with biological uh, 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 issues. And I want to understand, uh, uh, and Miroslav, you, you probably can help, uh, what is the meaning of this idea that uh, a, a cosmic power uh, uh, of goodness has been incarnated uh, and lived on Earth? Because that's what Christmas is all about. Well, in a sense, I wanted to, <clears throat> that's what I wanted to suggest with this idea of light coming into the darkness. And when we, when we think about God, we generally think of God uh, in association with the phrase God Almighty. And then the power ends up being the most significant feature, characteristic of God. But actually, in, in, uh, in many traditions, uh, certainly in Christian tradition, a uh, sense of God's love is more fundamental in a sense. God's divinity lies in God's love, indeed, in Christian tradition, in God's unconditional love. That consequence of that is the relationship between God and the world is that of <clears throat> world being held in God's hands, world being a place where God's goodness can come, uh, become manifest. And therefore, there is also struggle against the evil that appears uh, in, in the world. <clears throat> Love. For me, uh, yeah. going to church on Christmas is uh, trying to be receptive to a message of humility. I think this is the main message of Christmas to me. Uh, and, and humility is, is an ocean very tied with everything we've been discussing because it's the antidote, so to speak, uh, for the, against the arrogance of power. Yes. The arrogance of, of wealth. The, 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 the arrogance of science, yes. if I may, mm -hmm. of scientism. Yes. <laughs> and the arrogance of identity politics. Mm -hmm. no, this yeah. is Leon, what is the Jewish perspective oh, on, I don't know about uh, the, the uh, on, on redemption? <laughs> on redemption, right. well, but, uh, I side with the rabbi in the Talmud who says, may the Messiah come and may I never live to see him. <laughs> um, I, um, you know that the, the history of the history of Messianism in Judaism is the history of false Messianism. Um, we are a strange people in this way. We didn't think, it, people believe we invented the idea of the Messiah. That's not, it's true, but the really precise way, and I've made a, I'm actually in the middle, allegedly, of a book on this subject. I've studied the Messianic traditions of Judaism in great detail, and it would be more precise to say that we invented the idea of the Messiah and the simultaneous reluctance to accept one. <laughs> that there is a kind of skepticism about redemption. When I hear my brother Qasim talk about what he imagines the end, end of days to be, I must say I feel nothing but envy. I wish I could believe such things. Not criticism, but envy. All my life, I was moved by the story of Jesus, but only in the way that I was moved by a profound human story. It is an exclusively human story. For me, you have to have a heart of stone not to be moved by it, but it has no philosophical or metaphysical or religious implications for me. And the incarnation is a, you know, the idea that good came into the world and so on, the incarnation makes no sense to a, to a stiff-necked Jew such as myself. Um, but I, you know, but because I come from a tradition in which good and evil come into the world every time a baby is born. That is to say that there is evil and goodness in every human heart. There is a Yetzer HaTov and a Yetzer HaRa, and that is, that is how evil and good and evil subsist in the world. 
But there is, if you ask me what Christmas means to me, I'll tell you a story. For many, many decades, there was a vigil, a Christian vigil, outside the South African embassy in Washington protesting apartheid. And one day, it was in the early 80s, I got a call from a Christian friend who was responsible for the vigil, and he said, I have a kind of strange request you know, we don't want, we want to keep this vigil every day, even to pause it for one day would be a great defeat. And it's a week, it's a week from Christmas, and I said, I get it. Send the Christians home, the Jews will take over the vigil. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we celebrated Christmas with all that that implies. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>